Hello and welcome to Vivork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the second in a 10-part video series in which I'm teaching you how to automate using VMware View Realize Orchestrator. In this video, we're going to be exploring how to install Orchestrator and then how to configure it. Now, if you already have Orchestrator up and running, you can go ahead and skip to video number three. Uh, take a look at the, the, the links in the U the description section down below, and just jump to video three. On the other hand, if you don't yet have Orchestrator installed and configured, keep watching this video. As you can see in this first bullet item, uh, I've already previously created a, a detailed video series that explains how to install Orchestrator. Uh, as you can see, there's a URL listed in the first bullet item that if you go there, you can see those videos. Uh, do note that in the URL, that's www.vvork.info. It's not www.work.info, but www.vvork.info. If you go to those videos, but you're only interested in the portion that talks about how to perform the installation of Orchestrator, then all you need to look at is video number seven. On the other hand, if your Orchestrator server is not yet installed and configured, keep watching this video. So let's assume that your orchestrator server is installed, but you haven't yet configured it. To configure the orchestrator server, you'll use a utility called the orchestrator configuration, excuse me, the orchestrator control center. Now, orchestrator control center may not be running on your system. So in order to either check whether it is or isn't, or to actually turn it on, you can connect to your orchestrator server using either SSH or the console log in as root, and then type the command service space vco dash configurator space start. Now you'll notice there are some other options over on the right, but the option we need right now is start. After the control center service is running, you'll connect by launching a web browser and going to the URL http colon slash slash and then either the FQDN or short name or IP address of your orchestrator server. You'll be greeted by a login screen. On that screen, login is root and use whatever password you assigned to root when you deployed orchestrator. So now that we know how to configure orchestrator, let's talk for a few moments about the types of things that you do with the control center. So Control Center is the place where you go to license Orchestrator. It's also where you go if you need to import SSL certificates for the servers that Orchestrator is going to be communicating with. Orchestrator likes to do uh, SSL encryption between itself and the external system, so we need their SSL certificates. One way of importing them is through Control Center. Installing plugins is done through Control Center and configuring how Orchestrator performs user authentication is also configured in Control Center. So for these reasons and others, Control Center plays a very important role. So now that we know how to start Control Center and what it, some of the things it's used for, let's actually perform a demo and see Control Center in action. As you can see, I'm logged into my Windows VM and to get into Control Center, I'm going to start up a browser. I could choose Internet Explorer, Firefox. I'm going to choose Chrome. And in my web browser window, as I said a few moments ago, I'm going to type HTTP colon slash slash vro.vvork.info. Obviously, your machine name and domain name are going to be different. When I hit enter, it's actually going to redirect a bit, as you can see up here in the URL. If you want to type that URL next time you can, I prefer the shorter one. And in the screen that this takes you to, there are uh, a, a number of different links, including these two links, which I'll talk about in the next video. But the one that we're interested in right now is this one labeled Orchestrator Control Center. Let's click on that. And just before we do, uh, notice the URL in the lower left-hand corner. If you want to jump straight to the Control Center um, application, you can use that URL instead of going through this intermediary screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link labeled Orchestrator Control Center. And as you can see, I'm being prompted to log in. So I'll log in as root, and I'll type the password that I assigned when I deployed Orchestrator. Click Login. 
And as you can see here, the Control Center has a number of different sections that you can go to to not just configure things, but monitor things that are going on, perform maintenance, and so forth. All can be done here. For instance, under Startup Options, you can go there to start and stop and restart the orchestrator server. If we click Home, uh, if you had a uh, the, the need to install certificates, you can do so here. If you've got to install a license for Orchestrator, you do so here. So as you can see, there's different sections for configuring and monitoring different aspects of Orchestrator, but Control Center puts them all at your fingertips and makes it easy to configure them. Once you're done configuring the, uh, the Orchestrator server, there's no logout button per se. Uh, there are other drop-down menus that you can choose from. No login. Uh, or logout button per se, all you have to do is simply close your browser window. So having done that, you've now seen how to find out information about installing Orchestrator. You've seen how to configure Orchestrator. For more information about the actual uh, steps of configuring Orchestrator, consult VMware's product documentation at www.vmware.com slash support slash pubs. You'll find the Orchestrator, uh, the Orchestrator documentation down there. Uh, or join me in the classroom. Love to see you there. But that wraps up this rather quick video. But do stick around. Do um, come back for the next video, video number three. In that video, what we're going to be doing is learning how to run orchestrator workflows. So see you over in video number three.